Welcome to the Sea Trade Maritime Podcast. You're listening to Marcus Hand, editor of Sea Trade Maritime News. Today we're talking with Daniel Richards from Maritime Strategies International about the outlook for the container shipping market in the second half of 2023. Daniel, welcome to the podcast. Thanks, Marcus, for having us on again. Yeah, great to have you back. Container shipping's obviously come off from that enormous high that we had over the last couple of years. We've seen the spot rates plunge. Now we come to the mid-year point. Uh, Daniel, perhaps you can tell our listeners whether you feel that the container markets have kind of stabilised now. I'd say tentatively yes for now. You've seen most market measures effectively trend sideways for a number of months now, certainly with spot rates. As you've said, the spot dollar per TU rates are now generally back down to where things were in sort of normal pre-pandemic markets. There are bright spots, so volumes and rates into the Mediterranean still are quite strong coming from the Far East. But yeah, so broadly, there's not been too much excitement and there hasn't been much more downward movement. But we're still seeing some further erosion of freight rate levels on some of the long haul trades in the most recent data. There's been some volatility, or at least there was some volatility around the US West Coast labour dispute that led to a a, a pretty short-lived and temporary spike in rates that's now come back off again. But yeah, broadly speaking, things have stabilised for now. And it does feel that the level at which spot rates have fallen to, for the moment, they're not going to fall much further. But there also doesn't seem like there's a particularly strong rebound around the corner. Okay, so you've had that sort of, you know, almost effectively hit bottom by the sounds of it for the the spot rates. Now, obviously, we've been had the sort of renegotiations of contracts, Asia Europe, and then more recently the Trans Pacific. Have we seen the full impact of that fall of spot rates into those contract rates? It doesn't feel quite yet, no. As you've said, a lot of contracts that were signed earlier in 2022 at very, very strong levels have now expired and new contracts have been signed. The initial evidence we have is that those obviously are at much lower levels, but overall average industry freight rates are still above where they were before 2020. So if you look at the preliminary results put out by OCL in Q2-23, their overall average freight rates were still about 18% above where they were in 2019. If you look at the kind of the, the global container pricing index put out by Container Trade Statistics, in May, again, that was around 20% above where we were in 2019. So that gap, it feels like it's going to close a bit more But I said quite a lot of the pass through to contract rates has played out so far, but it's probably not quite the full impact yet. Okay, so so still going to see probably that when we go forward to the sort of financial results for Q3, Q4 into next year, that pressure from the contract rates then? Yeah, I would expect that average line company freight rates, they'll they'll fall in Q2 relative to where they were in Q1, and there'll likely be a, a subsequent fall again in Q3 and Q4, at that point, maybe things then starting to bottom out. But then that also then becomes a question of, will market balances, will the supply demand balance in the industry, how far will that deteriorate in the next sort of six to nine months going into the next several years, given the amount of tonnage that's now hitting the water? Yeah, which very much brings me on to my next question, actually, which was, I mean, we've seen, a, I think we saw a record volume of new building in terms of TU capacity delivered last month. What impact is this going to have on that whole de- demand supply balance? So, yeah, we've obviously known that this new wave of new vessel capacity hitting the water was going to arrive, but it really now is arriving in earnest. So you saw about 360,000 TU of new ships being delivered in Q1. That jumped to close to 600 TU in Q2. And so yeah, by the end of July, we're probably looking at the volume of new vessels hitting the water being equal to what we saw in the whole of last year. And this is not yet being really offset with much in the way of vessel scrapping. Only around 65,000 TU of vessels scrapped so far this year. So it's building up pressure on trade lanes forcing liners to add additional capacity onto these trades. 
at a time where trade has been middling to weak to downright dreadful in, in, on certain routes going into the US. So it's going to force liner companies to think about where they're putting their assets, what size of assets they need or ships they need. And it's going to lead to a period of probably quite prolonged oversupply in the container shipping industry. Yeah, you can sort of see that building up, can't you? Do you see any sort of like room for delaying these deliveries with shipyards? Or is this just kind of a ball that's set in motion and it's all going to happen? On the margins, yes, you can look at slipping deliveries into subsequent quarters, into subsequent years. Um, Some of the yards are reportedly having some issues with getting enough skilled labour, which may provide something of an excuse to delay deliveries. But so far, the really big Mega Max 24,000 TU container ships, they're arriving at a pretty brisk rate at the moment. So, yeah, some some deliveries will be slipped. A handful might end up being cancelled, or that hasn't been a particularly regular phenomenon with container shipping for the past 10 years. Scrapping will increase. I think it's going to reach sort of historically unprecedented levels certainly next year and the year after, partly just because there's a a larger available fleet that's at scrappable age. And there will be some efforts to offset oversupply with either slower sailing speeds um, that are at the same time potentially helping meet some of the new environmental regulations coming in, or as we've seen some carriers start to do, you just increase the number of weeks you're taking to sail on a particular trade lane, so you add buffer time into your schedules, you put in an additional port call, and if the time it's taking it's taking you to do a round voyage sailing from the Far East to Northern Europe and back, if that goes up by a week, you're soaking up an additional ship there to keep that service running weekly, but you're not adding to the weekly sailing capacity available to shippers. So there are these offsetting supply levers that the carriers are going to be able to pull, but it's mostly going to be offsetting at the margin. And as you said, it is a ball that's now in motion and it is going to become a challenge for the industry in terms of that supply-demand balance weakening. So overall, it's going to be, relatively speaking, a fairly challenging second half of the year, would that be fair to say? It feels that way. You know, there's going to be seasonality and some degree of volatility in terms of freight rates. There's a scenario where although the early indications aren't that great, if peak season volumes end up being a bit stronger than expected, you could see a a sort of seasonal rise in freight rates um, in Q3. I don't know if that's my base case expectation, but in general, you will see some short-term volatility, but the overall outlook for the industry is getting weaker. And certainly by the back end of this year, it does feel that markets are going to remain under pressure. That is all we have time for on this episode of the Sea Trade Maritime Podcast. If you've enjoyed listening, make sure you subscribe on the app of your choice to never miss an episode. Thank you for listening. <laughs> <laughs>